Hello, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. It always is. Today, it's a beautiful day. Great. Ah, no, no, the skies are great. Not so much a beautiful day outside, but it's always a beautiful day here at the workshop. So, great having you here. I'm still working on the hinges for the Samurai Carpenter toolbox. Here is the piece of Damascus that I've made for it. I'm gonna cut off the end here, and then I'm gonna etch this piece and see how it looks. If it looks good, fantastic. I'm then gonna cut it up into four separate pieces, so I can then forge out the stock for the hinges. Even though it's been welded, you can still see the remnants of the weld. You can see the weld line. This is because it's only had a few welding heats on it. So what this shows me is where at the ends, the pattern kind of curves ever so slightly. If you look here from the end where it's obviously just not perfectly together, as usually always happens on the ends there, it does bend in, so I want to make sure that when I cut it, so I get an accurate representation of the pattern, I cut it right where it starts to straighten off. So I'm going to be ending off cutting Actually, you know, I could probably make a belt buckle out of this at some point. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a pretty decent slice off here. I'm going to cut like three-eighths of an inch, then I can etch this, see how it looks, and always make something cool out of it. So that seems like a good idea. So into the bandsaw vise we go. You notice I have a piece of wood here, that's because I can't guarantee that this is all perfectly flat, and the wood gives me some give with the vise, so we can still get a good grip. I'm now about to line this up where I want it. There we go. And then I can just grip it with that. Solid as a rock. I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna let the coolant start flowing, and then I'm gonna lower it down and let it start cutting. What's cool is that already from that uh, scaled side, you can see a little bit of the pattern. I'm gonna degrease it with degreaser. Please don't go putting WD-40 on your uh, Damascus before you go into the etch. I'm gonna put it in the acid, this is ferric chloride, and we'll let it chooch. So since it's the summertime, I wanted a hat that's gonna be a little bit cooler to wear um, if I'm outside, so I got myself a blue one of my hats. Let's see how that looks. Cool. Does anybody want a blue hat? Should I put one up on the website? I kind of think I should get some uh, different designs. I have black ones on the website. What do you guys think about blue? You want it up there? Let me know. With that tangent in the rear view, let's have a look. Of course, this etch is a dirty etch, so you can't see a lot. But look at the little bits of the explosion pattern. It looks mean, you know, it doesn't quite look as even and symmetrical in terms of the actual little stars themselves. But I love the overall look. There are a lot more jagged edges to it. What I also like is how the pattern joins with each, uh, each stack. Obviously the last weld, there were four stacks, and it all joins together really well. I think this is going to be stunningly successful. Look at that. That's gonna be just beautiful. And I think this little piece here will make a cool belt buckle in its own right once I draw that out. Once I start actually forging these, I wanna make sure that I forge them all from the same direction so the pattern kind of, uh, would be the term book matches correctly. So I'm going to draw a uh, white paint mark across the length of it. Then I know that this way up, okay, great, I can have this be the barrel of the hinge and then work the rest of it. So I need to see where I can cut to, and I think that's about it. So I have about kind of three-eighths of an inch of wastage, and I can eyeball that with my fingernail, measure it, uh, what does that come to? It comes to 114 millimeters, allowing three millimeters for um, the cut. No, four millimeters for the cut, pardon me. That'll bring it to 110 millimeters. So if I do 110 divided by four, that gives me 27.5 millimeters per slab. I need four slabs, so I'm gonna throw this in the saw. We're gonna get it set up and cut off four more pieces. So I've now cut off two of the slabs, but of course this is getting short and I only have a little bit of purchase in the vise now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack weld this piece onto this little bit of angle iron, and then I'll be able to clamp the angle iron itself in the vise when I go to cutting the second cut. So all four pieces have now been cut. It was pretty slow going. It's some, uh, whoops, it's some tough material. I'm gonna run these into the other room so we can deburr them on the belt grinder. So I'm gonna set these here. 
But first, I'm quite hungry, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my food and in order to offend those of you that don't like me cooking in plastic Tupperware. I cooked some mean fajitas this morning. I'm gonna run up here and get them warm in the microwave. This hat is cool. Ooh, yeah. I've done eating, I need to now have a think about how this is gonna be forged. Now, it is really important that I get this right, because I have only four pieces of steel, and I need to make four halves of a hinge. Now, I've done a prototype video, I've done prototype hinges, I made them nice and big, so I had plenty of ability to learn from it, and, uh, and, and, and see mistakes happening, so that I could anticipate not having those mistakes on this set. <laughs> I need to make four of these that are as close to the same as possible, uh, which is going to be difficult. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make sure that I draw out all four of these um, to the same length, and then I measure off the exact same amount, isolate in the perfect place, so that they're all as close to symmetrical as possible. So, I don't know what happened there. I have two I have two of the pieces in the forge, they're heating up. I haven't put them all in because I don't want them over oxidizing by being hot too long. With this, because I want to make sure it goes right, I'm really more than happy to take my time with these things. I'm going to make sure I get a really nice high heat with this. Because they're forge welded, you know, so it doesn't come apart, it's important that I keep it all nice and hot so that in the process of forging it, I'm not going to be as likely to tear it apart. I would hate for this to get torn apart. It would be such a horrible pain. I hope it won't. I would hate for this to get torn apart. It would be such a horrible pain. I hope it won't. This is where there was a problem. As I forged it, on the sides, a crack opened up on every single weld line. This was a trouble, so I left you here and we're fast forwarding the rest because I've been pulling my hair out for the last uh, 30 minutes trying to get these welds to take. This consisted of forge welding again, fluxing, forge welding, grinding out cracks, forge welding some more, drawing it out, forge welding, drawing it out, checking it back, checking it back, putting it back together, putting it back together. I draw it out and eventually I have two pieces that don't have cracks and a forge to 16 millimeters thick, 45 millimeters wide. Oh my goodness, this right here is the face of somebody that feels like he's just cheated death. This feels good. It's also daunting because I only have two of the pieces forged. I still have to put the other two in the fire. At least now I know what to expect. This afternoon's going to turn into a little bit of a longer afternoon. My goodness, it'll be satisfying once I get through it though. <laughs>
down there. Cooling. I'm gonna turn off the Ford. It is hot in here today. There is one that has a delamination on the back side. This is the only one with an issue and it has a slight little bit of delamination. Now this is gonna be on the rear of the hinge, so hopefully it's not a structural issue and then since it's on the rear, you won't see it afterwards. I'm gonna see how that goes. Um, hopefully this isn't a massive problem. I don't think it is. I'm still feeling pretty damn positive. Don't worry, you're not the only one that, can, that, 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 that thinks it's funny that I'm this pink after a long day of work. Completely dirty, I'm soaked in sweat. What a fantastic day it has been. I've really enjoyed myself. I really hope you have too. It's been a blast. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be on the Bridgeport and we're gonna be doing some machining to machine these hinges some more. Gonna be very exciting and I have been fortunate enough to be peeking at the Damascus pattern while forging it as it shows through in the oxidation. These things are gonna look unbelievable. Oh my goodness, I know this is going to go fantastically with the box. Now, if you're wondering what box am I talking about, I'm going to leave a link to where you can see me unboxing the Samurai Carpenter Collaboration Toolbox right here. Right there, go click it. Um, or if you don't want to watch that and you want to watch a more recent video, there's yesterday's video. And of course, please do hit subscribe. I'm tired. I'm going to edit this video, I'm going to get some good rest, and I'm going to see you tomorrow when we do some machining. Bye-bye.